Second C is communicate. My friend Dalton McGinty was in the media the other day talking about back channeling handhelds in the classroom. He's not really, I don't know him personally, sorry, that was a facetious comment. But he's talking about handhelds in the classroom. And I have a, a friend of mine who is an exemplary teacher. He's outstanding. And his name is Royan. And Royan teaches his kids to back channel. And if you don't know what back channeling is, it's like if you were sitting here right now and you had your computers or your Blackberries or whatever you chose, and I had set up a Twitter hashtag. So if, if you're not sure what that is, it's, it's like a, a chat room area that you can chat on Twitter. And you can post things about what I am saying. So Larry could be communicating with Mary right now, instead of whispering to the people at your table, you could be communicating as an entire audience with each other about my message. And it's called back channeling. It's a way of collaboratively learning as I'm sharing. Ryan teaches his kids to back channel. He teaches them to back channel not only when he's teaching, but he teaches them to back channel during a test. Okay, hmm, so we think about that. Do you know what? Twitter allows you 140 characters, and if you can tell me the answer to a question in 140 characters, then chances are I asked you the wrong question. As teachers, we need to think about what are we assessing when we assess our kids' learning? Are we just asking them to memorize and regurgitate? I found this amazing quote from a youngster in Minneapolis who said, learning the capital of Florida, the importance of knowing the capital of Florida died the day my phone learned the answer. We don't need to memorize facts. We're primary Googlers. You can find anything you want in a few clicks. Okay, so how are we assessing our kids' learning? Chances are they're going to be communicating with each other anyway. And what Royan has found is that when he looks at the Twitter hashtag that his kids have used to communicate during learning and during testing situations, he learns more about his children as learners than he does by marking their tests. Because he's learning how they can support the learning of others without exactly giving them the answer. Okay, so he provides them the venue. Another thing I want to tell you about communicate is, it's not on here because it was just something incredible that happened to me last week. And I live for breakthrough with, breakthroughs with kids. And one of, my, one of my delightful youngsters this year is a selective mute. Um, she's chosen not to speak. She's physically able to speak. She's not spoken in a school since kindergarten. She's in my grade four class. And uh, um, we've been trying all sorts of things with her. She's, she's built a lot of trust with me. And I took her to an iMac computer. And on an iMac computer, you can do all sorts of ridiculous, silly stuff, like take pictures with a photo booth, and make your head look really big, and make yourself have four eyes, and do all sorts of goofy stuff. So we were having lots of fun together, and we were laughing. Then I showed her how to use GarageBand. And GarageBand is just a, just a fancy recording device. But the neat thing about GarageBand is you can see the wavelength of your voice when you record it. So I showed her how to record my voice. And we played together for a little bit, and she recorded my voice and pushed the buttons, so I knew, how she, I knew that she knew how to use it. And I just said very casually, I'm going to leave you to do this. You can tell me a sentence, and when I come back, we can play it together. And I left the classroom. And when I came back in, I was shocked to see a wavelength of a sentence that she had spoken. And I got to hear her voice for the first time. She was willing to communicate with me. And the last thing we did together, just um, Friday, was we created a podcast using GarageBand. I asked her questions, and she responded. I now have an audio record of us having a conversation. It's an incredible breakthrough. She won't speak to me. She won't speak to me when I'm in the classroom. But she's willing to speak to the computer, and I can hear her voice. She's willing to communicate. This is, a, this is what a garage band looks like. You can see the, the wavelength, so that's what it looks like. One of my amazing teachers who I work with, his name is Peter Jenkins. He was working with a group of grade seven students, and they were working on a, a, a modern version of Romeo and Juliet. And he decided to engage his students by having them create a soundtrack to Romeo and Juliet using garage band. And they created the, um, the action in all the different scenes by creating the music to accompany it. And to have a literacy connection, they had to uh, briefly describe each event that was happening in each song. He put it all together into CDs, and all the kids had their own CD of the soundtrack of Romeo and Juliet. Way cooler than my English teacher. Collaborating. 
uh, a really, another colleague who I've gotten to know, his name is Jonathan Lewis. And he had students working on a debate uh, in between two schools. He used another uh, Web 2.0 tool, which is an online tool called VoiceThreads. And he hooked up with another teacher in another school. And they used VoiceThread as a medium for collecting and sharing information. And instead of having one school against another, what John did was he partnered some kids in his school with some kids in Ming's school. So there was one team, and then there was another team, which were more kids, the other, the other half of his students with the other half of Ming's students. So they were working collaboratively across schools, and they were using VoiceThread as a medium to, to store, organize their information. And then they hooked up through an Adobe Connect, through a video link, and they used Twitter as a way of communicating with each other and feeding each other information during the debate. I'm going to be using Moodle as a collaborative um, tool for four schools in, in York Region. And we're going to be using Moodle as a way of creating media presentations about the different learning skills, the new learning skills as they came out from growing success. And the kids are going to be making all sorts of different media presentations, posting them on Moodle, and then being able to provide feedback to each other through Moodle. Consolidate. This is my other C. Rennie is a character who was created by one of my friends, Farhana's class. And Farhana taught grade six last year. And Farhana was taken aback when her kids kept coming and asking her to visit her website, their website. And she didn't have time. And like most of us, she got busy with doing what she was doing. Well, when she finally took the time to visit this website that the children had created, she discovered this character, Rennie, was living there. And Rennie is a fictional character that the kids created. And on their own, they had started writing the Chronicles of Rennie. They were writing stories about this character. The kids had assumed roles for all the things that they do well and were sharing things through this website. Somebody had become the illustrator and they had created pictures for Rennie. Somebody was the musician and created a theme song for Rennie. And this entire world existed around this character, Rennie. They were consolidating all the things she was teaching teaching them. And the best thing was they thought they were being sneaky about it. They thought it was something they were doing like a contraband. It was awesome. They were consolidating all their learning using a website. And she loved it. It was great. These are my guys. This has nothing to do with consolidate. But I just love this picture because it looks like they look like pack animals. They just all want to sit close to each other. So yeah, they're all working on different things. But they're all just sitting close together working on the computers and critically analyze. Um, there's another class that I know of who started to take a look at um, uh, historical fiction books. And with the resources we have, started to research the actual context and time and place and characters and setting and events that happened in those books that were portrayed. And they were able to critically analyze the accuracy of the information portrayed in those fictional books. And they loved it when they could find things that were accurate and they could find things that were inaccurate, even better. That made them critically aware. Then we talked about author's choice. And why, does the cho why did the author choose to portray things the way they did? Do you think they knew? It was it a conscious choice? Lots of different ways to critically analyze fiction texts. So those are the C's. So through the digital world, you can connect. You can communicate, create, collaborate, consolidate, and critically analyze. But I have one final C. And it is a challenge. Personal challenge for you. When I first started writing this book, I thought, who am I to write about digital literacy? Who am I to write about all this stuff? There are all these people who know so much more than I do. It was scary, and it was intimidating. My challenge to you is to become the biggest learners in your classroom. Because as we continue to learn, if we are open with our students and we are willing for them to be able to teach us stuff, because let's face it, folks, they know more about digital literacy than we ever will. If we're willing to open that door and say to the kids, hey, guys, this is what I know. Can you go try it out? And when you figure out something else, can you share it with me? If we're willing to take that risk and become learners that we want our kids to do, then we will, we will all benefit. Become the biggest learner in your classroom. Take the risk. Teaching in the 21st century, it's not about staying current. It's about staying open. We will never know everything there is to know. Even when this book was going to print, 
Mary kept sending me emails asking me about other digital tools. Can we include this? Can we include this? Can we? No, time is done. The world is going to continue to change. The book is going to print. We're done now. And the final quote that I wanted to share with you is from J John Dewey. And I skipped it. Oh, why didn't it go to it? Sorry. Technical difficulties. There we go. Oh, this is my personal mantra. Sorry, I missed this one. This is something I, I've really come to hold very near and dear in the last little while. It's don't ride the wave. It's make waves so that others can ride. We need to be leading the way. And I think it's kind of crazy that in the 21st century, I'm going to end with a quote from 1944. And it is as relevant now as it was then. And it is the most forward thinking thing from 1944. It's if we teach today as we did yesterday, we rob our children of tomorrow. And that, my friends, is engaging 21st century learners. And that's a Prezi.